Polar bears have gathered on the shores of Hudson Bay, waiting for sea ice to form. Sea ice at this time of year is crucial to help them in their hunt for food. It's because of this, conservationists, scientists and researchers have all gathered in Churchill watching the bears. Now this week also happens to be Polar Bear Week. It's hosted by Polar Bears International. And I recently spoke with Alisa McCall, who is a scientist and the director of conservation outreach and Dr. John Whiteman, who is a chief research scientist with Polar Bears International. Right now we are just east of Churchill, Manitoba. We are on a tundra buggy, tundra buggy one. It's a mobile broadcast studio out here. Uh, on the shores of Hudson Bay, we're roaming around looking for polar bears. We've got a polar bear cam mounted on Buggy One, and we're out here bringing the polar bears to people all around the world. Polar Bear Week is the first week of November every year, and it's really just an extra reason for us to celebrate polar bears. This week is often the height of the polar bear migration. We know there will be polar bears here outside of Churchill, Manitoba. They're moving to the shores of Hudson Bay because soon Hudson Bay will freeze up for the winter. It's a great time to view the bears and to talk about the bears and to talk about action to protect the bears. And this year, we're particularly highlighting a research project we have called Detect and Protect, working to further human polar bear coexistence across the Arctic. Dr. Whiteman, I want to ask you, this is an important time of year uh, for the polar bears. Why is this time in particular so important for them? So this is a particularly vulnerable time of the year for polar bears because they're very well adapted for life out on the sea ice. If there's one thing to know about polar bears, it's that they're at home on the sea ice. But this time of year, in many places in the Arctic, the sea ice either melts and retreats a little bit further to the north, becoming out of reach for the polar bears, or in some cases, like here in western Hudson Bay, the sea ice melts completely. And when that happens, polar bears are forced to go ashore where they make do and they basically just wait for that sea ice to return. So they're wandering around on the land and they're eating whatever it is that they can find. But there's basically no food here in the terrestrial environment that can come close to mimicking all the calories and nutrition that they get out of their normal prey, which are seals and marine mammals. So this is a tough time of year for them. Uh, they're all clustered on the shore waiting for that sea ice to return. And the sooner it returns, the sooner they can go back to doing what they do best which is hunting seals. John, is is the polar bear situation almost like the coal and can, coal and the canary kind of like deal or the, the canary in the coal mine, if, if we look at it that way? It really is. So polar bears are unique for a lot of reasons. Um, they're spread all the way around the world. They're all the way around the Arctic. Uh, and they're this very, you know, a, a fierce, well-adapted animal that is perfectly at home in this incredibly hostile environment. So they they, you know, on the one hand, they're this really robust, powerful species that are very kind of majestic and inspiring. On the other hand, because they depend so heavily on the sea ice, they're uniquely vulnerable. And so in terms of climate change and the consequences, the negative consequences of climate change for uh, wildlife species, as well as ultimately for humans, there's basically no better icon. As the climate goes, the sea ice is going to go and it's going to affect the polar bears. So the fact that they're such an inspiring species, but also the fact that they're such a uniquely vulnerable species really makes them a great icon for starting to understand the problem of climate change, as well as the solutions for climate change. Alisa, um, for us here in Manitoba, I mean, the, the polar bear is such a cherished uh, animal. What do you want people to think about or to know when it, it comes to, you know, preserving the future of polar bears or thinking about the environment? I think the number one thing for people to take home is that we know we can keep polar bears in the Arctic. We are seeing changes, we are seeing declines, but we know why. And when we know why that's happening, we can do something about it. Polar Bears International's Polar Bear Week runs until Saturday. And if you actually wanna see the bears for yourself and you can't get up to Churchill, you can check out a 24 seven live cam feed at explore.org. Marjorie Dowhouse, CBC News, Winnipeg.